I'm Brian Rogers Jr. and I'm a commercial photographer and digital artist. I've always known that I wanted to be an artist in some way, shape or form. I didn't know what that looked like when I was a kid, but as time went on, I realized that photography was where my passion was. One of the really big benefits to working with continuous lighting is the fact that you can see exactly what the product is gonna look like. Having this live view and being able to really craft your light is a good way to go. Photoshop is an essential tool in advertising photography. That's really how you can perfect images. The retouching, the creativity, the color grading, just all that stuff really comes together. I'm gonna hit Command J to uh, duplicate it. And I'm just going to double click on it. And I'm gonna sample one of these oranges. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna basically just change the color of the background. Earlier this year, we met up with Brian to create an F-Stoppers original free tutorial that just lives on YouTube. And it ended up being one of the most popular free lessons that we have ever filmed. And so after we saw the reception of that video, we knew we had to do a full tutorial with Brian. Now we've duplicated the same image and gave the appearance that we had a group of these all shot together, all perfectly lit. But in product photography, you wanna get creative, right? You'd be surprised what little things you can do that could take a shot to the next level. I guess one of the more difficult things to work with as a product photographer is when you've got multiple surfaces on the same product. Not all products are just all chrome or all matte finish. Sometimes products have multiple surfaces and you've gotta find a creative way to light each part of those. So you'll notice that we've got a lot of high key white going on at the bottom. What I wanna do is minimize that completely. What we can do is like shape the light a little bit better. So let's just bring this in. We're gonna place it on set. Let's take a quick shot here and see what we have. This gives us some options to play with. Sometimes when you're on set and you're placing a light, it might look great on certain areas of the image and not so great on others. So when you can use Photoshop to eliminate those areas and blend frames together and exposures, you can create an image that you just could not create in the camera. What's so exciting about product photography is that literally anybody can do it with any gear and in any size space. We wanted this tutorial to appeal to anybody on any budget. In the first shot, we used continuous lighting. In the second shot, we moved into speed lights. And now we're gonna be moving into strobes. I use compositing quite a bit. I think it's a really creative way to build files in a smart way that allow flexibility in the end. So if a client changes their decision on placement or anything like that, the file's really flexible and allows you room to move around and change things. One lesson in particular, I decided to shoot a set of bookshelf speakers. And when I did that, you would think that I'd grab both speakers and set up a shot, but I actually just photographed one at multiple angles and then composited the two together, giving me total flexibility in post-production. Gonna make it smaller, I'm gonna hold shift and alt at the same time. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so it appears as if it's behind the speaker. I'm then gonna use the move tool and just move it over slightly. Now you can see that it's kind of behind the speaker now. And all I wanna do is just go through here in this area and slightly burn down this edge. The nice thing about doing it this way is that we have complete control. If we decide at a later time that we want the speaker out a little bit more, we can do that. In addition to that, we're also maximizing the resolution. We have more resolution doing it this way than we would shooting both speakers at the same time. Every lesson in this tutorial is totally unique. Not only is he using different types of lights for each one of these shots, but he's also got completely different techniques that he's using for each one of these shots as well. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna start the focus stacking process. Now you can imagine this would be impossible if this light was moving around the entire time because you've seen in Photoshop already that sometimes when you change your lighting up and you try to auto align your layers, it just doesn't come together. And the same thing will happen if you're trying to focus stack and your lights are moving around. So that's why it's absolutely crucial that we get everything right on set and right in the camera. 
This tutorial includes all of Brian's shots, so if you're the type of person like me who enjoys learning by actually doing, you're gonna have everything you need to follow along in post-production. We do have 50 files, and it does take a little bit of time here, but Helicon Focus is definitely much faster than Photoshop. You can go through here and really see the details of this watch. Like all of the F-Stoppers tutorials, this is a digital download so you can instantly buy it and start watching it, but you're also going to get access to a secret Facebook group. In this group, you're going to be able to ask any questions you might have about product photography to Brian himself or other world-class photographers. All right, so it's almost like we've made a psych wall here, except it's kind of going the opposite direction of what you would normally see. We're doing that because, again, we want to fill in the product and we need a, a light source like this overhead so we can get the reflection that we're looking for. Now, I'm moving it back and forth, left to right, and you can see that those gradations are now changing. Even though I'm gonna be talking about Photoshop quite a bit, you don't have to be an expert in Photoshop to make great images. In fact, we start very simple and build our skills as we go. And if you're well acquainted with Photoshop already, you just might learn something new. Sometimes it can be hard to see where all of those imperfections are. So what I like to do in that case is make this crazy curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna add a ton of points. But you can see these little spots that are showing up. And we couldn't see that when this layer was off. They're like practically invisible. I get questions all the time online about how did you do this or how did you do that? And I'm really excited to finally share some of the most useful tips I've learned over the years in product photography. So we may want to fine tune this, but overall I think it's looking good because if you look at the lines here, we've got these lines kind of just leading into the product and it's the same way over here as well. If you've been thinking about getting into product photography or taking your product photography to the next level, this tutorial is for you. So for those people who say, you know, do it all on camera, this is for you. But the nice thing is, is now that we have done everything pretty much in the camera, we're not gonna have a ton of posts to do.